Hi, this is Damien Ferry, Life of the Unshackled, the senior editor here, presenting to you the Unshackler Awards 2019. Now, the reason why we do these awards is basically because we continue to get a lot of the time, not all the time, but much throughout the years, we've seen Marxists, um, left-leaning people always getting the slots on the Australian of the Year Award. So we thought we'd provide a little bit of a, um, a different experience here for our uh, viewers and our readership. And we'll provide 10 awards, 10 different topics with 10 different nominees. So the way this works basically is that I will present each award from the least important to the most important and I will present it in a way that presents each of the results from the person that got the least amount of votes to the person that got the most amount of votes. So our first award here is the 2019 Fake News of the Year Award. Our previous winners in the past were CNN in 2016 and the ABC in 2017 and 2018 as we've done these awards now for the fourth year running. So, in order, SBS, The Huffington Post, Mamma Mia, Vice Media, Junkie, New York Times, Nine Fairfax. In third place, with 15% of the vote, CNN. And that is a winner that obviously won the 2016 um, award on that year running and one that has been heavily against uh, the Republicans in America, um, very anti-Trump, very anti-nationalist, uh, conservative, and um, someone that definitely deserves that position. In second place, with 18% of the vote, it goes to The Guardian. Now, The Guardian is a global um, news network, newspaper that goes around, and that they obviously have a lot of uh, um, information also on their websites in this day and age. And The Guardian is very, very left-leaning, um, even far left. I mean, when you see some of the people, some of the journalists they have on that um, website and um, doing the editor editorials are just... It's mind-boggling. I mean, you've got people like Van Badham, um, a lot of feminists, a lot of extremists on there. So they definitely deserve that second place spot. And third year running now with a whopping 57% of the vote, it goes to our own ABC. Now, the ABC obviously has q and It has the drum. Many, many left-wing programs that is very biased. And the worst thing about it is that it is a public broadcaster. Now, a public broadcaster is supposed to be fair and balanced, but they never are. And that's what makes them a very, um, a very viable um, award winner for this year. I mean, it's, it's just crazy the, the things that they get away with. It's just not on. And people continue to speak up against it, but it just seems to be on deaf ears when it comes to this government. Now we'll move on to the next award, the 2019 International Media Personality of the Year. Now, previous winners for this were Milo back in 2016 and 2017 and Paul Joseph Watson, PJW, in 2018 last year. So we'll see how they fare well in these uh, awards. So we've got Anne Coulter, Michelle Malkin, Faith Goldie, Andy No, James O'Keefe, Mike Cernovich, and Alex Jones. In third position, with 21% of the vote, we have Alan Jones. Alan Jones, a regular for 2GB on his breakfast program, and someone that also um, is a, a regular writer for, for many newspapers, and um, has definitely a lot of sway over audiences. Um, also a regular on Sky News as well. In second place, Paul Joseph Watson, with 24% of the vote. PJW, very big on YouTube, got a big following throughout the globe, and someone definitely worthy of that position. And in first position, a new winner with 28% of the vote, Tucker Carlson. And Tucker Carlson, of course, is a, um, a regular on Fox News, has his own show, and somebody that is uh, very popular 
a very um, anti-neocon and definitely um, someone that has uh, embraced this uh, sense of populism um, that has uh, swept through America and has definitely um, throughout his journalism and throughout his um, when he's on the TV shows and everything he portrays those views quite clearly so he's he's someone's definitely going towards um, a different mode than what the Republicans used to be in the past which is great to see on the next um, award that we've got coming up, it's the 2019 Degenerate of the Year Award. Now, in the past, we've had previous winners such as Vanya Uspensky, also known as Liz Kazon, and Tom Bollard as well from last year. In this year, we've got Katie Hill, Harvey Weinstein, Unision, Prince Andrew, Kevin Spacey, Joe Biden, Ghislaine Maxwell, and in third place, none other than, with 16% of the vote, Jeffrey Epstein. And Jeffrey Epstein, I don't really have to explain why he should be here, because everybody knows, he's definitely worthy of that position, of the award, and if anything, I would have thought that he might have even got higher. So, definitely worthy of that position on that uh, Degenerate of the Year award. In second place, Ilhan Omar, a Democrat uh, politician overseas that um, has been many, many people that have said that um, she slept with her brother and um, has also had a divorce and, and all sorts of things. A lot of scandals surrounding her and she's also of the far left too. So um, someone deserving of that place in second place. And the person that wins this First position in Degenerate of the Year goes to Jessica Yaniv with 29% of the vote. Now, Jessica Yaniv is um, most likely to be remembered by all as a uh, transgendered person that um, ordered somebody or basically forced somebody um, in their approach to uh, wax their balls. Wax his balls. So that, that, that's what made um, this, partic this particular person very uh, famous in um, last year. And um, of course, they're, they're very ripe with social media and everything like that too. So there's a lot of derogatory things on there if you wanted to go and see their page. But yeah, this, this is uh, just a, a real psychotic person that um, has mental issues. And like I said, you know, has been in trouble with the law and their views when you when you look at who they are as a person and what they stand for I mean it basically says it all really definitely worthy for first place now 2019 culture warrior of the year award now in the previous winners in the past we've had Sam Hyde in 2017 and Daisy Cousins in 2018 in this time here in this year we've got Tanya Davies Bettina Arndt Daisy Cousins Bill Muhlenberg, Margaret Court, Bernard Gaynor, Kira Lee Smith, and third place with 11% of the vote, Mark Latham. Mark Latham being the New South Wales One Nation leader, someone that has definitely, um, as a previous Labor leader as well, had a big running in politics and continues to uh, push his views forward and see how the, the left necessarily don't uh, represent him anymore and has made those changes politically. For the benefits, so um, someone that's done a lot of good work in New South Wales. In second place, with 16% of the vote, Israel Folau. Now, Israel Folau, footballer, uh, somebody that has been, um, of course, Rugby Australia had a big run in with them regarding his views on homosexuality and all different other things as well, uh, promoting his Christian views in the Bible. Someone definitely has um, the freedom or should have the freedom to speak his mind in his personal life and it shouldn't necessarily affect his career because what happens in his public life and personal life are two different things. I mean, somebody in the workplace has to be good at what they do. So if he's a good football player, regardless of his views on same-sex marriage, homosexuality or anything else has nothing to do with his football. And that's the problem there. I mean, and it just mind-boggling that leftists actually don't even see this. They just see this as, oh yeah, well that's part of the contract 
but why it shouldn't be part of a contract. If you stand up for workers' rights, then at the end of the day, you shouldn't see this as part of any contract. What people do outside of time of work is their business. And that's somebody would believe that if they really stood up for workers, unlike the yuppie socialist left that are supposed to stand up for them, but don't because they've totally abandoned the working class. And in first place, with 40% of the vote, Jacinta Price. Jacinta Price with a whopping margin there. Someone that's a, um, a councillor, obviously in Alice Springs, and also ran as a uh, CLP candidate in the last election. Somebody that's um, definitely changing the tide within her own community, the Aboriginal community. Someone that doesn't want to um, get involved in this division that the left continue to bring us down every year, especially around these invasion day rallies and everything that they have here. So this is the type of people we need here. I mean, to, to regularly see the lies that the left don't stand for them. I mean, they keep them in their same position, the same place that they always are, rather than trying to give them the opportunities to lift themselves up. And that is the real, the real problem that they're facing. And they're seeing this slowly and slowly. And it's just a shame that so many of people are blind. But Jacinta's done a lot of work there in trying to change the tide. And she continues to be that example there. That you don't, just because you are a minority group, don't have to necessarily um, vote one way and believe in one style of politics. Especially when they don't really stand up for your interests. So when it comes to the next award here, we've got... The 2019 Triggered Feminist of the Year. So, previous winners we've had on this is Hillary Clinton back in 2016, and Sarah Hansen Young in 2017 and 2018. So this year we've got Tracy Spicer, Marcia Langton, Vanessa Van Badham, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Yumi Steins, Cheryl Moody, and Jacinda Ardern. In third place, we have Sarah Hansen Young with 18% of the vote. Sarah Hansen Young, obviously a, a key member of the Greens in South Australia, someone that had a big feud with David Lionhelm, and someone that is um, obviously a, a massive feminist. I mean, she hasn't held her views back on that, said that men are pigs and many other derogatory uh, things in the past. So someone that um, is definitely worthy of that position. In second place, we've got Clementine Ford, 20%. Now Clementine is definitely one of the, um, the biggest um, feminists in Australia at the moment and someone um, that many see as very cringe. Um, she has a fan base obviously, but is doing a lot of damage to women, more than she'd ever believe. And a lot of people are standing up and changing the tide. I mean, when it comes to the new trad wife movement, for instance, a lot of people seeing the lies that feminists has actually um, put out there the last 50 years and that women's lives haven't actually gotten better at all, gotten worse, and that they're not as respected as they used to be. And they just haven't got life as good as they used to have. So, I mean, this cause that were actually uh, organised and created by men, by very rich uh, men, that created these movements in order to destabilise the community and cause division and destroy the family. So um, Clementine Ford, number two on the list. And number one on the list, new nominee with 23%, Greta Thunberg. Now Greta Thunberg, obviously everybody knows who she is. Big climate change, um, far left alarmist, um, someone that is a parrot for the UN, someone that definitely doesn't want to look at facts and just wants to parrot everything else that the handlers tell her to do. Soros, um, everyone throwing money at her at the moment. Um, her parents are writing her speeches, that's been proven. I mean, as soon as they took a speech away from her, she didn't even know what to say. So, I mean, this is someone that is just reading a script. I mean, they're not a saviour to mankind. What they say is based on lies, because when you look at the past 40 years, 50 years even, that there's been um, climate change alarmism out in the public square. Uh, you got acid rain in the 80s, the ozone layer, layer in the 90s that I got taught in school. You've got global warming, ice caps melting back in the 70s even. So you've got all these decades that 
said the world was going to end, and it never did. And it never even got worse in any... I mean, when people look at the temperatures of the bushfires and everything, most of them are started by arsonists, and a lot of them are also started due to too much fuel on the ground. I mean, no backburning allowed with the greenies and everything. Can't even backburn on your own farms that you own. I mean, this kind of red tape is destroyed. And I mean, at the end of the day, they're, they're just laughing at it because they want everybody living in the cities anyway. I mean, they just laugh at the fact of, you know, having our farms destroyed. I mean, that, that's just the way they are. Destroy manufacturing, destroy the agriculture industry, put everybody in cities, all like battery hens in cages. And that's the kind of life that they want to live for their new world order. So um, she's definitely worthy of this. Doesn't say anything about 5G. And the causes that, you know, the harmful health effects of that doesn't say anything about GMOs. I mean, the, these are things that greenies you would fought, would have fought for, would have fought, fought against. But they don't mention it. You're not allowed to mention those things because it goes against their agenda. So you can only mention things that, you know, are smoke screens to the real truth. So anyway... Greta Thunberg, definitely worthy of this, and um, I'm sure that she will definitely get more um, more uh, awards in the future, perhaps, for The Unshackled. Next award is the 2019 Cis White Male of the Year Award. Previous winners, we've had Corey Bernardi, Tommy Robinson, and this time around, we've got E. Michael Jones, we've got Martin Selner, PewDiePie, Mark Collette, David Lionhill, Nick Fuentes, Boris Johnson. On third place, we've got Malcolm Roberts with 13% of the vote, someone that's a big star for One Nation over in Queensland. So he's doing a good job in destroying this climate change rhetoric in the narrative. So he's um, been doing an excellent job. And in number two, we of course have Ricky Gervais. Now, Ricky Gervais is on 18% of the vote, and he was famously um, somebody that came out during the award ceremonies recently and just said it as it is and said, you know what, I'm sick and tired of Hollywood celebrities coming here, preaching their progressive views and telling everybody how to think and how to act when they're in no position to do so. They don't really live real lives. I mean, they're in a, a bubble They've got everything so easy, and it's so easy for them to latch onto these soft brain, uh, soft brain ideologies and positions, and they don't even know what it's like to have it tough. So they're in no role. All they have to do is thank everybody, shut up, and get the hell out of there, just like he even said. So, I mean, a great person or whatever, um, great speech. Second place goes to him. And the first place winner, with 33% uh, of the vote, Tony Abbott. Uh, past PM, somebody that a lot of people admire, and not only for his politics, um, because his politics might not be totally perfect, it might have some flaws, but the, the, the character of the man, I mean, this guy here in his spare time fights fires, and this is something that, I mean, volunteer work isn't, isn't quite uh, common amongst politicians, it just doesn't happen very often. So for someone to go out there fighting all these bushfires, um, he's doing a hell of a lot more than Zali Stegall ever will. I mean, she's crying about climate change, but doing nothing about it. He's actually going out there and doing um, the community a favour and putting these fires out. You know, so when you look at the past member for Warringah versus the new member for Warringah, I think I know which one is a better choice for the, for the people of that seat. So someone that will definitely continue in the past to play a public role. And it's great that he made the list and he's come first place. So well done to him. So the next uh, award here we've got is the 2019 International Cuck of the Year. Now, this has um, been an interesting um, award here because for the past three years, 2016, 17 and 18, we've only had one winner and that winner is Justin Trudeau. Just keeps on winning that award. And um, there's many reasons why he does, but we'll see how he fares anyway when it comes to this vote here. So we've had, this time round, Beto O'Rourke, Sasha Baron-Cohen. We've had Charlie Kirk, Emmanuel Macron, David Koch, Will Connolly, a.k.a. Eggboy, Bill Shorten, 
And in third place, with 13% of the vote, we've got Prince Harry. And, I mean, it's very obvious why he would make that role, but uh, it seems like he's done a bit of a 180 on his family and chose to just run off and um, do whatever his wife wanted him to do. So um, definitely someone that could be called a cuck. He's definitely not calling the shots or wearing the pants in his family. And it uh, just seems to be that whatever his, his uh, rebellious left-wing um, spouse wants is what, they, what she gets. So someone definitely worthy of the award. And on second place, Justin Trudeau. So this time he didn't end up winning with 14% of the vote. Justin Trudeau um, said a lot of famous quotes like, when you kill your enemies, that they win, uh, for instance. Um, I mean, he's, he's just literally somebody that's so far left in Canada and it's just taken him down this really um, filthy road, you know. I mean, the, the amount of Marxism in their schools, their LGBT indoctrination, um, abortion, it's just, it's just absolutely nuts there. It's one of the, the most left-leaning countries in the world. And for someone like him that is really extreme to be in the position of Prime Minister is quite scary. So uh, definitely someone worthy of that award. And in first place, a new winner, Richard Di Natale, with 43% of the vote. Massive vote there for him. And the Greens leader, of course, someone that's um, definitely got very similar tendencies to Justin Trudeau, very similar views ideologically to him, and not a, not a very big fan um, of, of him. Uh, I don't think many people are that, that are in tune with the Unshackled. So it doesn't surprise me that he would win this award. And um, I, I think he's got a, a, a strong chance of winning future awards too. So, yeah, def definitely worthy of that first place position. Now we've got the 2019 Unshackler of the Year Award. So in the past, we've had Donald Trump winning in 2016 and 2017. And last year in 2000, well, not last year, but the last awards, that was the 2018 awards, uh, Fraser Anning won that one. So let's see how they fare. We've got Vladimir Putin. We've got Sebastian Kurz. We've got Rodrigo Duterte. Jair Bolsonaro. Viktor Orban. Matteo Salvini. Pauline Hansen. And in third place, with 8% of the vote, we've got Nigel Farage, Mr. Uh, Brexit himself, someone that's definitely had a big influence in his country in pushing that populist rhetoric through. So um, it's really interesting to see how he fares in the future. And it's great to see that we finally, as far as I'm aware, and hopefully without any delay, we'll see a Brexit coming to, uh, to the UK because they just have to govern on their own. I mean, national sovereignty is so important and the UN is a very totalitarian, totalitarian um, uh, communist regime, really. I mean, when you, when you, look, when you look down to their, their plans for all the globe to merge us all in and, and have us um, basically enslaved. So, I mean, it's really good that he's taken this third position out and that people are starting to wake up because of it. Um, in second place, Fraser Ranning, of course, with 24%. And Fraser Ranning, um, no need to really... Um, give much info because everybody knows who he is. He's done a great job in um, pushing out his views um, in Australia. Um, you know, conservative, nationalist views, identity. Uh, he's, he's really done a big job there, you know, like um, created his own party. And despite what people say, I mean, he still was able to get a good over 1% of the vote, which was huge considering the amount of competition there is on the right of minor parties to gain uh, spots within the Senates and so forth. So, I mean, he's done a quite, quite a good job. And who knows what the future holds for him, so we'll look out for him. And first place, Donald Trump, 49% of the vote. Massive vote there for him. And someone that, although I might disagree with his views, in particular with um, Middle East conflict, uh, potential war with Iran and stuff, obviously, I, I'm, I'm not for that. I'm not, I'm not a globalist. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely against any sort of... Um, Inter international sort of um, interruptions, getting involved in other people's business. So um, that's something that I might disagree with, and many do, but um, he's, he's a good campaigner on gun rights, free speech, and someone that is, um, as many say, the, the most pro-life president that they've ever had. He's actually the first president um, only a few days ago that attended the first um, 
uh, first one that attended a March for Life rally. So, I mean, that's huge. And his speech was actually quite a good one too. So it's great to have someone that is pro-life as a president and that, um, you know, knows the truth behind the scams and what, you know, feminists try and put on women because there's no other bigger issue than abortion, really. And it's something that we have to be a, a voice for the unborn, a voice for the voiceless. So when it comes to the next award, we're nearing towards the end. We've got two more awards left. So we've got the Australian Patriot of the Year Award, a, a definitely a favourite within our circles. And previous winners, we've had 2016 Blair Cottrell, and in 2017 and 2018 Christopher Shorter. So we'll see how they fare in this vote this year. So we've got Christopher Shortus, Neil Erickson, Ricky Turner, Samrat Joshua Gruel, Nick Folks, Dennis Hutz. Now tied in third position, we've got a tie here between two. We've got on 9% both John Bolton, which was the lawyer of uh, the Bendigo Free there, someone that is um, a real free speech advocate and that is a speaker at many rallies around Australia. And also the Bendigo Faithful. And the Bendigo Faithful, um, with a great result there for them, a um, good group of people that wave their flags every Thursday over at, uh, at Bendigo and just want to make people proud of who they are and, and put that patriotism back in society. So it is really good to see them get this third place, this type of third place. Really great job. In second place with 18% of the vote, Blair Cottrell. So Blair Cottrell back up there, someone that's a key figure to the uh, Patriot movement in Australia. And um, he's been on Sky News, he's been around, he's had his bank, uh, bank accounts shut down on him, people clamping down on him. I mean, he's had it tough, but at the end of the day, he's always been a key figure, done great speeches in the past, attends a lot of rallies, organises a lot of groups. He's someone that's just very well known and... Um, Ideologically, I mean, he's, he's right there. He's just, he's just consistent, you know. He's just consistent in his views and wants the best for his country. Now, in first place, a new winner that just edged by a couple of votes just in front of Blair, Scott Marland, with 18% or so of the vote. And he's the new Patriot of the Year. And he's somebody that was a Fraser candidate for Oxley in the last federal election. And also uh, big, um, a big organiser within the Reclaim Australia. Australia. Um, he, the Facebook pages and the group in general when they have events. He's always been a big speaker at those events. Hailing from Queensland. Uh, somebody that um, on social media has a lot to say. It's definitely interesting to see what he puts up. So someone deserving of first place. And it's great to see someone new. And we'll see how they go... Uh, on the, on the following year, because it's always a big competition to get in this uh, Patriot of the Year award. So it's not easy, but nevertheless, you know, you have to just get out there, put your voice out and hopefully get a lot of people, a lot of new fans and people following what you have to say and, and having a lot of respect for that. So without any further ado, we've got the last, the last award which is the 2019 Australian Regressive of the Year Award. Now, previous winners has been Waleed Ali in 2016, and in 2017 and 2018, Daniel Andrews. So this year we've got David Shoebridge, Alex Mann, David Hollis, Peter Grace, Christina Keneally, Gladys Berejiklian, Daniel Andrews, and in third place, just ahead of Daniel Andrews, is Waleed Ali of the project, of course, someone that's um, very famous, very famously disliked, and um, de definitely someone that continues to prop up minority groups and continue to attack the, the so-called establishment, which isn't really the establishment, but um, if anything, um, the project is pretty cancerous and not worthy of watching, but unfortunately, too many people still watch it, so... Definitely worthy of third place, uh, Waleed Ali. Uh, in second place, Jock Powfreyman with 32% of the vote. Jock, um, the, the bloke over in Bulgaria that got charged with murder um, in that uh, street brawl. 
Um, and it's actually a surprise that he got so high, but you know, Jock um, is definitely known for his left wing views, and uh, with his case over in Bulgaria, has become well known to a lot of people. So it doesn't surprise that uh, many more people now know who he is and what he stands for. And for second place, we'll see how he goes in, in his future and see what happens. And first place, with a huge 49% of the vote, is Tom Tanuki. Got to thank his followers for uh, boy, uh, basically getting into this uh, poll and, you know, doing their best job or whatever to provide all their hundreds of fans to, to go in there and vote for him. But hey, at the end of the day, I wouldn't think that that's a, um, a good thing. It's quite embarrassing to be the top of top regressive in Australia. So um, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, Tom Tanuki, founder of Yard, and um, best well known, apart from his extremist views, uh, for being the person that um, didn't defend his girlfriend when he uh, when she was assaulted by uh, Bluebeard, but instead in a cowardly manner went over and hid hid over in a liquor store. So this is the type of um, guy that he is, you know. I mean, he can't even protect his girlfriend, and he just gets scared and runs off, scared of a fight. I mean, as if if he was such a man, why wouldn't you be there defending her and helping her? As if you'd let your girl get beaten up, and then you just walk away and just hide from it. I mean. You know, he can yell in, in people's faces and, he, you know, he could call people fascists all they like, all he likes. But at the end of the day, when he's really confronted with a situation firsthand, he runs and hides. So, you know, I mean, that, that's what it is at the end of the day, you know, like um, Tom Tanuki, Australian Regressive of the, year of the Year, well deserving of that, regardless of um, if he's... If his boys voted in the poll or not, it does it just doesn't really make a difference. I mean, he's um, deserving of that position, and we'll see what the future holds in that regard. And I'm sure we'll hear more from him anyway. Um, they're all the awards that uh, present the 2019 um, Unshackler Awards. Now, 10 subjects, 10 people per award. It's something that garners a lot of interest. And this is the fourth time that we've done this now. The fourth time that we have presented the Unshackler of the Year Awards. So that's pretty much it. Um, all I have to say is thank you for everybody tuning in. Uh, thank you for everybody voting. Whether you like us or hate us, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, that's what it is. You know, you get to vote and you get that free voice of yours to cast that vote. And we just want to make sure everybody tunes into our page. Um, also, uh, check out when I do post this online that you look up uh, the results. We'll have the video clip for people to.